How accurate is the VO2 max estimate on your Apple Watch or Garmin? A couple of recent studies have shed light on this topic, and it appears that these estimates may not be as precise as we'd like to believe. Many smartwatch users track their VO2 max as a way to monitor their fitness progress and overall health. The appeal lies in the accessibility of this metric, which traditionally required expensive laboratory equipment and trade professionals to measure accurately. Smartwatches use various algorithms, typically combining data from heart rate sensors, user-provided information, and GPS to estimate VO2 max. Uh, a new study published in the International Journal of Exercise si Science compared the VO2 max predictions from Apple and Garmin smartwatches to measurements obtained through indirect calorimetry, the gold standard method for assessing uh, VO2 max. The study involved 40 healthy participants aged 18 to 35 who completed a treadmill-based ramp protocol while their oxygen consumption was measured using a metabolic gas analyzer. Uh, as you can see from the table on the screen, uh, both Apple and Garmin devices consistently underestimated the VO2 max values. Apple devices actually showed a larger discrepancy, while Garmin devices performed slightly better, but still significantly underestimated the measured values. It's worth noting that the study did not specify which particular models of Apple and Garmin watches were used by the participants. However, another study published in the same journal uh, just a few weeks ago focused specifically on the Garmin Forerunner 265. It provides interesting comparative data. That study involved six subjects with an average age of 28.5 years. Participants wore the Garmin during a 10-minute outdoor run, after which the watch's VO2 max estimate was compared to data from a graded exercise test using a Woodway treadmill and Parvo metabolic cart. You can see the results on the screen. Uh, this shows that uh, the Forerunner 265 actually showed a tendency to overestimate VO2 max. Now, what are we to make of all of this? The results from the second study paint a very different picture from the initial study. While the broader study found that Garmin devices generally underestimated VO2 max by about 5.3 points, this focus study on the Forerunner 265 suggests an overestimation uh, or approximately the same amount. This could be due to several reasons. For starters, the sample size in the two studies is very different, with the first study being uh, much broader. Uh, another reason is uh, could be because the 265 uh, study used a 10-minute outdoor run uh, for, for the watch estimation, while the broader study uh, used a uh, treadmill-based ramp protocol. Uh, and another reason could be uh, the 265 is actually one of the newer models. It's possible that Garmin has changed its VO2 max estimation algorithm. Uh, to uh, remind, we don't actually know which Garmin was used for the, for the initial study. Now, one thing is clear. These contrasting results underscore the need for caution when interpreting VO2 max data from smartwatches. While these devices can provide uh, valuable uh, insights uh, for tracking personal fitness trends, users should be aware that estimates uh, may vary significantly from laboratory measurements. Most of us who keep an eye on our VO2 max know how unreliable the metric can be. For example, my default watch is the Garmin Forerunner 955. And if I do a short run, let's say three to five kilometers, my VO2 max uh, significantly increases. However, if I do anything above 10K, it will fall. Uh, it's good to see studies highlighting the ongoing challenges in accurately estimating VO2 max outside of a laboratory setting. Sure, keep an eye on your VO2 max, but use this value as a rough guideline rather than a precise measurement.